Good morning children. We are back to chapter hydrogen. Till now we have seen the position of hydrogen in the periodic table, its physical properties, chemical properties, how to prepare hydrogen, its uses. Then we saw the classification of hydrogen. In today's topic we are going to see water. Our next topic in the chapter is water. We are going to see the physical properties, chemical properties and other aspects of water. You know water is a very common, very abundant, okay. Water is a very common, abundant and easily obtainable chemical compound. Yes, no, H2O. Two elements combine together to form a compound. So about water, it's a common abundant and easily obtainable compound in the nature which is main reason for survival of many living beings and you know water can exist in the form of solid liquid or gaseous form and water is an universal solvent it has the ability to dissolve almost all the solute so water is an universal solvent and 70% of earth and 70% of the human body contains water and water is a colorless liquid, it's a volatile liquid, it's a movable liquid. So colorless, mobile and volatile liquid, easily vaporizable liquid. So these is about the introduction of water. So water is common, abundant and easily obtainable compound. It can exist in solid, liquid and gases. It's an universal solvent. 70% of the earth and 70% of the human body is composed of water. It's a colorless, mobile and volatile liquid. What are its physical properties? What are the physical properties of water? You know it's a colorless liquid, it does not have any specific taste, it's odorless. So it is colorless, odorless and tasteless liquid. Tasteless liquid. And what about its boiling point? It has a boiling point of 100 degree. So it has very high boiling point what is the reason for high boiling point of water due to intermolecular hydrogen bonding which we have discussed in the previous session because of intermolecular hydrogen bonding your water is having a very high boiling point and it has a high freezing point what about the heat of vaporization since the boiling point is high, it has high heat of vaporization. Water has high heat of vaporization. And its latent heat of fusion is high. Latent heat of fusion is very high. Its specific heat is high specific heat is high and it has a high surface tension thermal conductivity that is heat stability so thermal stability dipole moment dielectric constant everything is high so about the physical properties water is a colorless, odorless, tasteless liquid. It has a high boiling point due to intermolecular hydrogen bonding. It has high freezing point. It has high latent heat of vaporization, high latent heat of fusion, specific heat, increased surface tension, increased thermal stability, high dipole moment and high dielectric constant. What about the structure of water? How it will be? Water is a bent molecule. This we have seen in chapter 4. It is a bent molecule with a HCOH -H bond, right? H, H and O. The bond angle, since it's a bent molecule, the bond angle is 104.5 degree. And 
the OH bond length will be 95.7 picometer 95.7 picometer this is about the structure of water it's a bent molecule whose bond angle is 104.5 degrees and about the OH about the OH bond length it is 95.7 picometer you know this is this will be having lone pair of electrons this oxygen will be having a lone pair of electrons so we have seen uh, the introduction about uh, water we are done with physical properties we know the structure of water next moving to chemical properties of water next we are moving to chemical properties of water so what are the chemical properties your water has the ability to act both like an acid as well as like an base so what is this property called so this property is called as amphoteric nature this property of water is called as amphoteric nature that is ability of the water molecule to act like an acid as well as like an base is called as amphoteric nature so it behaves like an amphoteric substance how it acts like an acid see your water's formula is h2o now here it acts as an acid now i am adding a base ammonia i am adding a base ammonia so what happens your water will undergo hydrolysis to give you oh minus this h plus will go and add to nh3 as a result i will be getting ammonium okay so this is a base and h is there so this is an acid when hydrogen ion concentration is more it is acid when oh minus ion concentration is more this is a base so here my water acts as an acid second example h2s h is there so this is acid now i have water molecule here my water is going to act like a base so h it has accepted one h so it becomes h3o plus now this is an acid plus base will be hs minus because it has donated as h to h2o so h2s becomes hs minus so i have just cited two examples of how your water can act like an acid and my water can act like a base this is the reason why it has amphoteric in nature but generally water will be acting as a base towards acid which is stronger and it acts as a acid towards a base which is stronger than it okay so let me repeat the last statement generally your water act like a base to acids which is stronger than it and your water acts like an acid towards the base which is stronger than it right okay then we are moving to the redox reaction which already we have seen in the previous chapter so redox reaction which is involving water a redox reaction which is going to involve water now water can easily be reduced to dihydrogen okay whenever you think of the production of hydrogen you will come to know that the commercial production of hydrogen is from acidulated water okay from acidified water easily you can produce dihydrogen commercially so my water can easily be obtained or my water can easily be reduced to dihydrogen when you add electro positive metals take the same reaction which we have discussed before i have electro positive element that is na plus sodium metal i have taken and i have added water molecule so what happens here my water will be reduced to dihydrogen no so water is reduced to dihydrogen which is a gas what is remaining oh is o is remaining right 
so since it is 2 OH this goes to sodium as a result I will be getting two molecules of sodium hydroxide let me cite one more example with uh, potassium two molecules of potassium electropositive element when reacted with water so what will I get I will be getting potassium hydroxide a base plus hydrogen will be liberated this is how your water can easily be reduced to dihydrogen when you add electropositive metals now this is its reduction right what is generally redox reaction reaction where reduction and oxidation is coupled correct now we have seen the reduction reaction now we are going to see the oxidation reaction of water how to do that in photosynthesis your water will be oxidized to oxygen so what I have uh, cited this example is for reduction reaction of water and this reaction is an example for oxidation reaction where it happens your water will be oxidized to oxygen in case of photosynthesis not only there even your water will be oxidized to oxygen when it reacts with fluorine okay when it reacts with fluorine water is oxidized let me tell this example so I have a water molecule and I have fluorine now the resulting product should be oxygen and what is remaining H right so HF this reaction is not balanced so the reaction will be like this 4 hydrogen and 4 fluorine yeah this is how so I am done with this uh, topic that is reduction reaction involving water so till now what we have seen children till now I have explained about water what is its general properties then we have seen the physical properties then we saw what is the structure of water molecule then we saw the chemical properties of water then we saw reduction reaction I mean redox reaction involving water so redox reaction is an oxidation reduction coupled reaction for that I told you when water is reacting with electropositive metals I will be getting reduced hydrogen then and what about oxidation reaction water will be oxidized to oxygen in photosynthesis as well as the reactions with fluorine now moving to hydrolysis moving to the topic hydrolysis of water this is all coming under water only right hydrolysis see as I have discussed with the physical properties of water water is having high dielectric constant I think I have explained here under the physical properties we have explained that water is having high dielectric constant means what when my water is having high dielectric constant it is highly polar in nature okay it is highly polar in nature as well as it has a strong covalent character when dielectric constant is high then it is highly polar which means it can hydrolyze both ionic compounds as well as covalent compounds because it has high affinity for oxygen it has high affinity for oxygen so let me repeat this since water is having a high dielectric constant it, had, it can hydrolyze it has high polarity so it can hydrolyze both ionic compounds as well as covalent compounds because it has high affinity towards oxygen for this let me explain you how it is able to hydrolyze ionic compounds and covalent compounds now um, I have taken silicon tetrachloride when I am going to hydrolyze it with water then the product should be silicon oxide plus HCl okay now I have calcium nitrite when I am hydrolyzing it with water so I will be getting calcium hydroxide 
and ammonia so the reaction will be here the uh, calcium is balanced and what happens 3o is there and 3h is there here 3 is there so yeah 6 now 6 hydrogen here 3 and here 3 6 is done oxygen is 6 oxygen is 6 right so three, yeah, it should be CaOH2 3 2 is 6 then whether the reaction is balanced here I have this side 6 hydrogen so this side I have 3 2 is 6 is done this OH2 3 O is there here 2 ok nitrogen is 2 hydrogen yes done so we have balanced the reaction so under the topic hydrolysis we have discussed that since water is having high dielectric constant it has the ability to hydrolyze ionic compounds as well as covalent compounds uh, how it has hydrolyzed two compounds that is silicon tetrachloride and calcium nitride that we have discussed right next we will move to hydrate formation we have seen about hydrides what are its classification that is molecular hydrides ionic hydrides that we have seen next we need to move to the topic hydrate formation okay let us see that